Don't you just love it when your bucket is fresh? This is sort of the, the, the target look. Okay, and there they are. I have them all poured. Now we can top these off. Oh, y'all, look at that. Welcome back, everybody, to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones. Thanks for tuning in today and uh, taking time out of your schedule to watch me play around with colors and glitters. Um, so recently, well, I feel like all the time, but especially recently, I've been really focused on some of my um, kind of more multi-layered, um, intricate hand pours. Uh, I've been having a good time um, experimenting with, with different colors. I've been looking at like tons of pictures of, you know, shad and bluegill in nature and really trying to look at how those colors can be built in a soft plastic bait and more specifically how they can be hand poured. And uh, so I've got a challenge today. One of my good buddies, Noah Allen Clark, um, he's a phenomenal mold maker. I have a couple of his silicone molds. He kind of set out on a mission uh, about a month or two ago to do like a mirror scale carp, mirror carp as, as, as I know it. Um, I don't know the exact species name, but we'll look at a picture of one here in a second and everyone will understand what we're doing. And um, he was able to pour an incredible version of it. And uh, he kind of told me in a roundabout way, hey Chris, why don't you try to pour one in one of your aluminum, you know, skin pour it and all that. And I said, awesome, I definitely want to do it. And uh, I think even like a week ago, uh, Marling uh, did a wood version on his channel. So everyone's in the mirror carp uh, mindset. So we're gonna try that. And of course, before we get started, make sure and stay tuned for the end of the video to see this video's color of the day. Don't you just love it when your bucket is fresh and almost full? Plastic of the day, dead on plastics, of course. This is the craw tube blend. It's a medium hard blend. Um, anytime I'm making something like a frog or a large swim bait, um, even even uh, a, a little crawfish or punching bait, if, if you're going to be making uh, baits to go in heavy cover, uh, you definitely want a nice firm plastic. So we're going to be using the uh, black bucket craw tube today, and uh, we're about to get started. So again, this is sort of the, the, the target look. Um, I may not do the colors exactly like this fish, and I might do like a little uh, uh, throat color up, up front necessarily, um, just, just to change it up a bit. Okay, so for the first color, I sort of need a blackish charcoal. So um, maybe just two drops of black. And let's see what gets us, or excuse me, let's see what that gets us. I slightly overcooked that plastic. You know, whenever, whenever you're measuring out such small amounts, you know, it's, it's, it's 20 seconds, 10 seconds too much can actually uh, overcook it. Before you know it, yeah, I need more saturation. Because, you know, those scales, even though they're kind of that mother of pearlish, uh, bright color they do have some dark splotches within the scales so the scales are going to be two different layers sandwiched on top of each other okay so I kind of want to pour little tiny black splotches down the body of the bait and that's gonna kind of be where the scales are gonna start except and like I said tiny because then you got to remember we're gonna pour the shiny part of the scale over that so we want these huge scaly splotches all down the bait but they kind of need to be two-tone to an extent and have some of this black in there as well I think that's what's going to look most natural is is to kind of have these two-tone scales so maybe just one more all right nope nope hold on gotta clean this off that kind of gets gummed up as you use it so you know to get clean pores you want the spout to be clean or as clean as it can be so anyway yeah something like that and now let's do this other side just for uh demonstration we want to at least show how an entire one of these is going to be poured and again you know these splotches don't have to be all that precise 
you know the the heat is going to blend them together uh, anyways with with the pearly color but we we want to get them on there um, and I think that's kind of a nice little rough sketch of, of how I want this poured okay there we go we have all three molds all six halves uh, gray splotched and now we're going to move on to our color shift scale color all right so where the heck is my little spoon again okay found it this thing keeps going missing today so um, dip your car uh, you know Fonzie's an awesome guy awesome company they have like a lot of these crazy color shift powders and uh, this one seems to be perfect for this color because it already looks like mother of pearl in at least to me and you can mix these together um, to get all sorts of effect so uh, if you're a bait maker that wants some of this I do have an affiliate link in the description below with for my affiliate program with dip your car so you can go over there and get some awesome pearls like this one right here let's check it out come on baby stir oh yeah see how it's already just shiny and scaly oh my god yep I made a good choice all right so that's gonna be like what gives it that mother of pearl look but it's also sort of a gold scale so we're going to mix just a wee bit that's a that's a real unit of measurement a wee bit of gold in here to kind of gold up our mother of pearl oh my god are y'all seeing what I'm seeing yeah yeah this is revolutionary right here all right well, let's take a look let's stir it just a little bit more y'all look at that is that not mirror carp scale right there oh baby oh baby let's go all right so here comes one of the most difficult parts yeah it, isn't that lovely just kind of look at the, the coloring there so now we need to try to pour that over these black splotches but not so much that they kind of run together um, so here we go don't really know what I'm doing okay there we go maybe let it run down a little bit run up yeah so basically like that so I can just kind of start maybe up here and just kind of splotch it yeah there we go something like that you know just those big huge broken up scales something like that at least you can see I'm not necessarily just pouring it all at once I'm kind of dabbing the plastic on that way I have a little bit more control of of where it goes you can see I need to uh, clean up that mess right there so yeah really cool color all right yeah look at that color shift I just hope it's thick enough that you can really see this effect on the outside of the finished bait later or else all of this was for naught okay and there's that one and last but not least yeah there we go that's basically what we're doing so interesting hopefully it looks decent okay there we go looking good on to the next layer which is sort of going to be like a yellowish orange that we're going to kind of pour from the tail section down into the belly a little bit okay and a little orange and yellow so maybe yeah three drops of orange there these are all dead on colors all right let's see where that gets us yeah ugh, all over me now yep that's way too orange dang it all right we got to start over okay this is already much better it's a lot more yellow less orange we're actually going to add a little bit of this silver pearl to it again just to dull a little bit of the orange and give it a slight pearl effect and then maybe some small black flake okay doke let's see what we can do here again there's our color looking nice and we're just going to kind of start it right back here and pour it kind of down into the belly area 
not all the way up into the front but a but about like that is good all right next all right into the belly kind of let it fill in that bottom there all right that's essentially what we're doing they're starting to kind of look like something now it's always exciting to see your layers kind of build and turn into something that looks good so here we go just down into kind of that belly portion maybe stop it right there let it fill in the gaps okay Maybe take that little piece off right there, if we can get it off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's build this kind of black red. So there's a few drops of red. It's dead on plastics red colorant. <clears throat> yeah, looking good. Now let's maybe do two drops of black and see where that gets us. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah. So, if we look at this, you can see that nice, kind of dark crimson red. Let's lay it out on the, on the table there. Oh, I like that. I think we're going to go with that. Okay, and here we go. I actually added a little bit more black to it, so it's a little darker. And uh, here's what I want to do. I basically just want to now fill in most of those gaps, okay? So we're just going to start it right here. Okay, and go on down that kind of top edge. Just kind of splotch it on here and there. Okay, on into, on into the head. All right. Basically, that's it. And uh, as usual, we're doing it to all the molds. And uh, let's try this one real fast. This one's a little. This one will be a little bit easier for me to pour because I'm looking at it from the correct angle. <laughs> you know, again today we're kind of splotching our plastic on as much as we're pouring it, and that kind of creates some of that natural blending there. So, anyway. That is the next step. You can see I have sort of this spot that is vacant for color. I think I'm gonna add some sort of a throat color in there, probably like a light blue or something. Okay, so I was looking at more pictures of these mirror carp, and I didn't see any that had like a blue throat or really blue anywhere, um, but I did see a lot with this sort of like yellowy orange and orange orange. So I think up here in the nose, we're just going to do a little bit of orange. Just to kind of fill in that space. And that'll just give this bait a couple other colors in it that, that we can kind of look at. And uh, I think once those kind of blend together, uh, I think it'll look quite nice. So anyway, this is the final step. So as you can see, lots of layers here, lots of, of, of colors blending together. And uh, you know, this is, this is the part of hand pouring that I just love, is painting a picture in the mold and uh, seeing it come to life. So in any event, this is the final step as far as, as pouring our layers. You know, after this, it'll just be um, a uh, issue of um, just pouring the body so that's the final step okay and there we go there's what we have looking really cool and uh, I what I love about doing this method is that you can kind of see what it's gonna look like before you see what it's gonna look like you can look at these skins and just kind of imagine the inverse and you sort of have a picture of what you're gonna get and for the belly just some regular white mica powder just a nice white pearl belly. If you look at most fish in nature, they always have a white belly when you flip them over. 
So that's what we're going to attempt to do here. And uh, we're gonna stir that in. Then we're gonna pour our belly colors. All right, here we go. We're gonna pour this white pearl belly pretty far up. You know, normally when I'm doing my three color veins, I'm pouring to just the top of that little mid hook slot insert. But I'm gonna pour these a little bit further up. Okay, keep pouring. I want that white to go pretty far up the tail. So I'm gonna stop there. Yeah, you can see that white's up in the tail. Okay, yeah, here's a little bit better of an angle. So we'll do the second one here. <clears throat> you can see the white stopped about right there on that first one. Because <clears throat> we're only pouring two colors inside the bait. We're not doing a triple laminate inside all these skins. We just want a white belly and then sort of a uh, garnet red top. Okay, final color. We're gonna go back to this dead on red and add some red pigment. Just, just a few drops worth. Yeah, nice see-through blood red. Then we're going to add a few drops of black. Let's do three. And then I might actually add some orange to this mix. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of orange, stand by. Okay, one drop of dead on orange. That's the, oh my God, we did two, okay. Because that stuff right there is thick, it's strong. Okay. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. All right, and uh, some of this little black flake. This is just your 0 .015, all right? And uh, I mean, we're gonna use just a fraction of a quarter of a teaspoon here. And um, that's gonna be the top. Looking good. Just kind of freehanding it. All right. Don't want to over pour. Don't think we did. It's always so close, you know. You want to pour it up to the top. You want to get it filled in. You actually want to over pour it a little bit to where you get sort of like a dome effect. But you can so easily over pour, especially on the smaller molds. All right. We're going to go with that. And to get these layers really melted in well, we're going to keep the griddle on 350. So basically, I'm pouring these molds to full temperature. I'm not cold pouring. And then we're just going to let them cook for a while, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And uh, you just kind of eyeball it. And if it looks like it's starting to melt into a bunch of goo, obviously, you turn it off and cool them down. So uh, anyway, we'll see you back whenever these are done. All right. Mirror carp. Reveal, drum roll please. All right, here we go. Mm. Oh, look at that. See how it's got those kind of broken up mirror scales? And, and if we look at the scales, you can kind of see that sort of black gray splotchy stuff in them. And to me, that's what makes it look natural. Now, I will say, I wish I would have made the uh, scale color a little bit thicker. Thickened up that color shift pigment a little bit. That way, there's a little bit more contrast. They kind of, um, oops, out of focus. They're not quite as thick as I wanted to, but I think it really has the vibe. Um, man, that is just so cool. Look at that. Mirror carp. Ha <laughs> ha. Little, little, little juvenile mirror carp. And I'm glad I put that orange on the front. You can see there that orange. That's cool. Let's get the other ones out. Oh, y'all, look at that. You know, this is so exciting. I've, I've never made a skin pour color anything like this. Um, I've, I've never really used much of the color shift stuff in my skin pouring. So to see that kind of reflection there of those scales, that is really something special. All right, we're just gonna go with a nice natural eye. It's a fish skull eye, it's, uh, it's their green color, it's called Earth. And uh, it just kind of works well with everything. Just a nice natural looking eye. 
It's not necessarily like a standout eye. I, I didn't really have anything that I thought just matched up perfectly with these. So we're going with the old standby. So here we go. Yeah, looking good there. Yeah, these are super cool. And you know, being that this is just my first try, you know, obviously every time you pour, you kind of can learn a little bit about what you can do to improve it. So next time, you know, we would try to do even better. Heck yeah, I'm liking those. I am liking those. You know, there again, my only complaint is maybe a little bit more saturation in the scaling. You know, just that right there goes to show, man, you know, just with this open pouring and, and layering, you can almost pour anything that your imagination can imagine. That sounded really dumb. So, yeah, custom, this is why we do it. Custom lure making, there are no freaking limits. Okay, today's color of the day is what I like to call wild berry because it reminds me of wild berry pop tarts. So I want to use Lure Works purple, regular purple, one, two, three. And then I want to add, get my spoon. I want to add small blue flake. This is the tiny stuff, okay? I'm gonna add some of that. And then I want to add medium sized green flake, which is the 0 0.035. All right, let's add some of that. And that's basically it. This is Dead on Plastics Worm Blend now. A little bit softer because I like this very much as a worm color. So let's get our uh, knife here and stir her up. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that something? That blue flake, I think, kind of darkens that purple up a little bit and just turns it into a awesome color. So yeah, that right there is looking pretty good. And that's it, it's very simple. We're gonna run it in a few um, uh, finesse worms here, bass tackle mold, and uh, show you what they look like. Okay, and there we are. Ooh, man, they're not quite ready to come off yet, but we're gonna take them off anyway. Still a little bit gooey there, but that's okay, because I want them now. All right, let's take them out and take a look. Really, really pretty color. I think it makes an excellent finesse worm. I haven't really made it much in ribbon tail worms, so maybe one of y'all can can try that at home. See see how you like it. But yeah, there it is. Wild berry. Let's get a little bit closer there. Yeah. Really pretty color. Lighting's a little funky right now, so uh, this this would look better. Um, with a little bit better lighting conditions. So yeah, there it is, Wildberry. Really simple color, and uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has caught me a ton of fish. So uh, not only does it look good, but it also works well. And that is today's, or this video's color of the day. Yeah. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap this video up. Hope you guys enjoyed a really, really complicated, really involved, um, you know, really, com uh, I always say complicated, really intricate pour today, stacking layers like that. It's, it's difficult because you're, you're trying to get the saturations to work and you need it to be thick enough, but not so thick that you can't see the layers b beneath it, right? So to me, that's the really tricky part. Um, also, you know, actual, the physical, being being able to pour the pattern well blend the colors that's that's like oh man i love that challenge so much and that was a dang challenge you know like, like i said uh, there's a few changes i would make that we went over earlier and uh you know every time you try something that's really challenging that kind of stretches your your abilities you learn and uh to me that's the ultimate goal so we're going to sign this one off comments down below let me know what you think let me know how you like today's color of the day and we will catch you next time